so back to the sensors, I was today I was playing with it and um, I'm shooting a video for our audience so mm -hmm. that they can see how it works in our nursery at Gentry Boxers. And um, I'm really impressed with the app because it was giving me some information about the uh, consistency of poop and so forth. I, I'm really excited about being able to identify which puppies are um, using it and might have a problem that's causing soft stools or whatever. Um, so how do you see, uh, tell me about the sensors and how do you see the breeders using those, um, the app and the sensors? So the machine has three sets of sensors. Um, so I apologize for getting a little technical and wonky, but just it's helpful to talk about them so we know what sensors doing what work. Um, first off, there's a motion sensor and this sent um, on the product itself, um, we have the, the drive module and this is the motorized module that has the motor inside. And then there's actually a paper sensor that shines up through the bottom of the base reading the equivalent of Morse code on the underside of the pad. Most people don't even know that exists. Then there's an infrared sensor here. So think if you were to go into a, um, you know, you go to a public bathroom, you put your hands in the sink. Hopefully the water you know, turns on. Sometimes you have to do a little dance with your hands, but there's a little infrared sensor to know when a dog steps onto the machine or steps off the machine. And then third, there's a camera and it's not a video camera, it takes still photos but it is triggered by the infrared sensor. Every time there's an animal steps on, it takes a photo. When the animal steps off, it takes a photo. If in the app, you tap the button and say, take a picture right now, it too will take a photo. So we use these sensors to, to know a couple of things. Um, the the inf Again, the infrared sensor is how we know if there's an animal on or off uh, the Brilliant Pad. And because it's infrared, it works in the light and the dark because it's an invisible beam. Um, then we take the photo and it used to be, you can go just see the photo every time the beam was broken and restored. Um, but a couple of years ago, we developed something called Poop AI and we feed the photo through a computer and the computer can determine a few things. It can determine things like, is the pad clean or dirty? Is it soiled with liquids or solids? Did the dog poop on the 20 yard line or the 50 yard line? Like we, we <laughs> can do spatial analysis of that. When we identify and what the computer does is it draws little boxes around the puddles of pee or the pieces of poop. When we identify there's poop, that little piece is fed through another computer algorithm. And we say, analyze my poop. And if you think of a Bristol evaluation, it scores poop like one through seven, you know, we're not going to arm wrestle that my dog is a four versus your dog is a five. But the point of the scale is it shows soft to healthy logs to small pebbles. There's a range. And the, rather than displaying the raw score, we display one of three things. For every computer generated uh, outline of the poop, is it normal? Is it pebble? Or is it soft? And the idea is if there's pebbles, that's usually an indication of dehydration. And if it's soft, well, it's diarrhea detection. And we're not saying your dog has this condition or your dog has this disease. It's more of a prompt to say, we notice pebbles, which means check diets and water consumption, or we see something that says soft. And just because it's soft doesn't inherently mean there's a problem. But it generally means pay attention and see what happens next. And the AI was generally developed on the consumer side more than the breeder side, where the breeder said, hey, when I send my dog home, I want my customer paying just as much attention to the health of the dog as I do. And that means the dog, you know, unlike your kids that didn't say, mommy, I'm not feeling well, my stomach hurts. The dog doesn't explicitly say that. But if you pay close enough attention, you should know that. So this is you know, giving voice to the dog who, you know, if you look at their poop, you'll see that something's off, but this gives the human a prompt to potentially catch what you would otherwise miss. Um, or other people say, hey, my dog is sick and their vet says, well, when did this begin? Now, most people say shoulder shrug. I'm, I'm, I don't know, a few days ago. Well, was it three days ago or three weeks ago? Because that may tell us something of where we're at. 
So the app allows you to go backwards. Like you didn't think about it, but now you need to know, did this begin a few days ago or a few weeks ago? And you, it's like a time machine for your poop. You can look backwards and see when it began. Uh, other people shared with us, they come home and they see a mess. Well, how do you know which dog? You can go back to the app. It's because there's photos when the animal steps on the brilliant pad. And when they step off, oh, here's the photo of the mess. Let me look at the previous photo. Oh, that's Billy. Oh, that's Susie. You get a chance to see which dog it is. Um, the breeders like it in a different way. There's a lot of, in a breeding environment, you have many puppies using it concurrently. And it's just kind of, it's, it's, it's hard to tie it to a specific dog. It's much easier to tie it to a specific dog in like the home pet case. But in the breeder sense, you get a sense is, is that pad clean or dirty? Do I need to advance it? Overall, when you see a large collection of poop, you know, you'll kind of see the overall color, consistency, texture, size, shape, and you can be, yeah, that seems about right. Or that's not. And it's a pro generally prompts you to come over and take a look. So I think in the breeder situation is brilliant pad is always there. Even when you're not, it lets you look in and see the current situation. It lets you, if you want to advance the pad, tap a button to do it remotely. Um, or you can say, yeah, it's partially dirty. It's partially clean. I'm just going to wait and let them, let the dogs use it a little bit more. So either way, we just simply said a picture's worth a thousand words. And we didn't know when we created how much, how valuable that photo would be. But it seems to be like one of the favorite features of the consumer. The, and the breeders tell us it helps my clients. It prompts them to pay attention to what I wish they would pay attention to. And for me, it lets me know overall, is it clean or dirty? And it lets me have like a photo record of the whole litter's poop on the pad. Um, and of course, with one tap, uh, you know, you can whisk the mess and the mess gets rolled away. So I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Um, breeders live and die by poop. I mean, um, that tells us so much about the dog's health. And especially when we're working with young puppies, um, one of the most frustrating things is, you know, you've got one baby in there that maybe maybe is cooking up some Giardia or Coccidia or something like that. They're getting soft stools, but you don't know who it is. So having that camera access and either the breeder knows what all their puppies look like or they're wearing colored collars. And so they can capture that. They can see who that is. So they can pull them out if they need to treat them before it takes over the whole litter. So I really, really like that feature a lot.